So Karen, you're fresh off of a show from the Ryman last night that Riley played in, which is great because it got you to Nashville to get to do the podcast together. So That's excited right. to have yeah, you. Yes, it's so great to be here with you today. So you are a mom of three. Riley is the baby of two older sisters, right? Yes. Tell me a little bit about the kids and growing up. Well, um, he was always entertaining and, you know, that was just what he did. So he was either torturing his sisters or... Uh, <laughs> Or something, but they, he adored them, you know, he adored them, but he was always messing with them and everything. He probably got a ton of attention, and so he might have fed yes. into enjoying the spotlight a little bit, right? Yes, but he did, they, they did, he did do some things that just drove them crazy, too. Though. <laughs> when did you notice that Riley had musical talent, whether it was picking up an instrument or hearing a singing voice around the house? What was that like? Well, he could always sing, and he always made up new versions of songs. You know, he still calls writing songs, making up songs, so he's still doing it. But <laughs> once we were on a trip a few hours and he made up new verses to Oh My Darling Clementine all, <laughs> all the way there. And that was one of those times when his sisters wanted to strangle him because that just, that was a lot. But so he was always doing that, even oh when goodness. he was really small. He had a great singing voice and making up songs. I'd love to hear him sing that one today. I can only imagine Riley's version of Oh My Darling, Oh My Darling. <laughs> Yeah, when Riley was little, he was always just a little bit more fun than he was trouble, and that was <laughs> that helped him. So he get, got by with a whole lot. That right? helped him get by. It really yeah. did. Um, that uh, one thing he did was there was a bird nest on the porch outside his window, and it had eggs in it. And we we asked him to to leave it alone, you know, because he was kind of fascinated with it. And he was pretty small. And he couldn't leave it alone. And the eggs got broken, and so he did get an egg from the refrigerator and replace it in the nest <laughs> for the bird who, who egg. Who found it or, or realized uh, what it happened? I think his sister did. Yeah. Like, Mom, look look what he's done. So <laughs> the egg probably looked nothing like no, the other. no. others were just a little small, <laughs> <Yes>. you know. <laughs> yes. We learned a little bit about Riley because I think he really enjoys talking about this part of as far as the impact and the influence on his career. But both of his grandfathers played a huge role in his passion and love for music. Tell us about yeah, them. Yes. One of his, his my father-in-law was a big influence with his music. He taught him all the old um, country stuff and gospel and uh, bluegrass because that was his passion. He wanted to keep that going for other generations to know about it, so he started a music hall. This was Buford Green, right? Right. Okay. He started a music hall, and uh, Riley played out there a lot when he was growing up. He learned a lot from the gentlemen and ladies that played there, and it was all the old, old things. So this is a music hall that was built on property that they owned, right? Yes, like, it was my father-in-law's um, home where he grew up. In Alabama. What in town? Jacksonville. Okay. Uh -huh. And he... They, it was just a little group of pickers to start with, and then it just grew. People would come on Friday night. They'd bring snacks and have a break, and everyone would just socialize. And it, when it started getting bigger, they would just tear out walls and make more room for seating, and they made a big kitchen, and it just kind of grew into that. And it was called the Golden Saw Music Hall. Yes, yeah, it was and right it's still next, there. It's, it is. It's right next to the sawmill. It doesn't get used much anymore. But Riley did film his, the Golden Saw series, uh, the, some things on YouTube that are really fabulous, where he had some songwriters come down from Nashville and and film some things. Yeah, and if Riley fans have not seen that series, they need to go watch it. It's available yes, on it's, YouTube, and it's called the Golden Saw series. Right? Yes, they're two seasons with about four episodes each, and it's some great songwriters of singing their songs did you get to be a part of the taping and go yes. see them recording all of yeah. it and they interview you right it was during covid so we had a small audience okay. but you know we didn't advertise it we just kept it kind of small but the results are just fabulous to watch yeah if riley were to go do a show today at the golden Saw music hall would that be kind of a chaotic event because oh, yeah. of how if, much if, he's grown <laughs> If everyone knew about it, it was, but we kept those kind of low, low key when that was being filmed. But. Yeah. So even now though, you'd probably have to do invite only or something, right? right. Or something yes. that he would actually do there. Did we forget to see, see some shows where he was he performing? Did, I know he wasn't not as big. big as he is yes, now. But, but he did. And you know, uh, he spent so many hours with Riley just sitting on the porch uh, playing. And in fact, he says in one of his songs about him, he's, he says, he never could himself, but he taught me how to play. 
Mm. And so that, you know, that's where he's talking about his granddaddy. He couldn't play the guitar, but he, you know, spent that time with Riley and brought in other men who played and they all spent time together and teaching them the, you know, the older, the older music and all that. So it's a big influence there. And then tell us about your father, who was musical as well. And he kind of more, you know, your father was not? No, he wasn't musical, but he was also a big influence on Riley because he fished with him. And at his house, it was always like games. You know, you were playing dominoes or you were throwing the ball or you were having diving contests in the pool or, you know, you were fishing. Um, uh, so he has, his influence was more the outdoor Side, which is a huge part and the of the competitive Raleigh's side, yes, of as well. Yes, yes. At, at my father in law's home, it was the creative things. He was, uh, it was like a poetry writing contest and painting and drawing and you know, the singing and all. Wow. So that was a whole different side. Yeah, I bet you feel so blessed that Raleigh had that opportunity to grow up with both grandfathers oh, and yes. for them to have impacted his life. Well, the way you that can they certainly did. hear it in his songs, yeah. the, in, the influence that they had on him. He's got a new one that's um, This Ain't My Last Rodeo. It's a yeah, this com- whole new album is yes. really a very mm-hmm. much family impacted, isn't it? That song is another that's influenced by his grandfather. So there's several, and, and they really did have a lot of impact influence on his life the famous I wish grandpa's never died (laughs) tell me the story of you hearing that song for the first time and what Raleigh's told you about writing that one well it was a couple of weeks after my dad passed and we Raleigh was in Las Vegas when we called and told him and not on the road at a show I'm guessing yes yes right on on tour and he wrote down the title actually on the plane on the way home Oh wow! and then a few days later he wrote the song and he sent it to me and the, the sisters, and he said, I've written my best song, and he did that one by himself. Listen with caution, is what he told is that us. What he said? Yeah. Oh, wow. You he got knew a, it was going to be on emotional, one. yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I bet it's neat to see people's reactions to that song and how, um, I think it's one of the things in general to me about Riley's music is the relatability. It's the everyday man situations that he turns into poetry and and these incredible songs Mm -hmm. but they're so relatable I feel like to just you know the common average everyday person and and he'll tell you that's his goal is to write things that are relatable you know he says this is about my life but it just so happens it other people's can relate to it in their life as well yeah but he said he never gets tired of singing grandpa's yeah which is a good thing because I think that's going to be his I always call it I compare a song like that to um Garth's friends in low places like Garth can't do a concert and not do that song I think Riley will always have to do that one I think he will but he but he likes it and it's good what was that like for you because this probably would have been a few years now but that first time he got the invitation Mm -hmm. to play the Grand Ole Opry it's such a special moment for families I think it was maybe 2000 it was 2018 or 19 I'm not sure which but it was very special my parents and my mother-in-law were all able to be there and you know Riley always says you know it doesn't matter what he does you know the grandparents they're not that impressed, but when he plays the Opry, they're impressed. Uh, they're like, okay, this is it. You yeah. you made it, you know. Yeah. And it was great that they were all able to be there. It was very special. Do you remember him telling you that he was going to get to play the Opry? Yes, yes. And and uh, and he was a little bit, I think, not nervous or anything, but maybe just a little bit emotional because mm-hmm. it's just such a special thing, you know. Yeah. Or I've heard Connor say too the same thing because he, he describes more of you know a regular show like an adrenaline rush, mm-hmm. not nerves. He says he yes. doesn't feel nervous before a show, but at the Opry, he said it was a whole different it's just feeling. A different that feeling, if he yeah. was ever going to say that he was nervous for an event or a show, it was definitely the Grand Ole Opry. Mm-hmm. I think just because of how special it is. I think so. And yes. I think there's a lot of pressure to soak it all in and mm-hmm. to enjoy the moment. And then you want to perform well, but then you're just kind of in awe of the opportunity. Yes, yeah, I think so too. It An was... extra special that your family got to mm-hmm. enjoy that. So we know that he enjoyed entertaining and was, you know, had this fun personality as a child, the baby of the family. What was teenage Riley like? Was he mischievous at all? Did you uh-huh. stay up and have some sleepless nights? Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> it was it was a struggle sometimes. Certainly a challenge. Yeah. But you know some of those characteristics that made him 
uh, kind of difficult <laughs> at times might be the same characteristics that help him be where he is now. Exactly. You know? So yeah. you don't want to you don't want to crush that too much in children. I don't think you, you know they've got to have some of that if, if that's who they are. And so he was a little oppositional. Yeah. And, you know, a little sneaking, sneaking out and things like that. But <laughs> Did you ever have the moment of, like, waking up and going in the room and you wasn't there and you were supposed to be? Oh, yes, we did that. And, he, you know, the pillows are all under the cover and it looks like he's in there, but I check it and he's not. So, you know, usually every night he would just fill me in there touching his feet to make sure he was in the bed after that. But <laughs> Yes, he, he tried all the tricks. Oh, that's mm-hmm. so funny. And then he had not only you, but he had the two sisters that were a yeah. little bit mother hen over him, right? Yes, he, that's right. He exactly. probably couldn't get by with a whole lot. Mm-mm. But we made it. <laughs> you, you survived, we, yeah. And he turned out fine, so it's good. There you go, there you go. So when did this passion for sports start? I mean, he's obviously one of these guys that probably, no matter what he picked up, he was good at. He, but he football played, was his thing, right? Football he liked best, but he was also good at baseball and basketball, and he played soccer when he was little but he always he, and he's still you know he works out every day if he can find someone to throw the football or you know shoot basketball with then he's still interested in that now so those days you were probably hauling kids to practice mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and games Friday night mm-hmm. lights all mm-hmm. of those days did you love those days with Riley oh yes I loved all of it mm-hmm. my girls were both uh, three sport athletes as well oh wow so we had a lot of that but it was fun yeah. now I watch the great kids <laughs> <laughs> there you go. now you get to get all their sports and practices so he ends up in um as a quarterback at Jacksonville State Right. right. He was a walk on quarterback. Mm-hmm. Okay. So was that his plan to play football after high school? Uh, he liked football and he, he didn't, he, you know, he didn't go that far with it. Um, but he was there long enough to prove he was tough enough and he could do it. So it was more like for him, I think, than anything. Kind but of then to himself. Yeah, and he just started in a different direction with the music about that time. Is that when music started becoming more serious of like him thinking this might be what I want to pursue? Was it during in college? Well, in, when he was in college and I guess right out of high school, he started writing songs and playing at birthday parties, uh, the Mexican restaurant, you know, then it was fraternity events, you know, it just kind of went from there just more and more until it was, you know, making extra money and still doing jobs in the daytime. So for a while, did you think it was just fun for extra money to, for him to go and do these things as opposed to making a life out of touring and, and seeking a record deal, like all of those things? Well, I'm not sure he saw all that coming, really. I could think at some point he probably thought he could make a living writing songs, but I don't know that he actually had a plan to do this, you know, full time and have a record deal and all that. It just kind of happened over a slow period. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and him taking part in the reality show Redneck Island kind of was also a catapult, wasn't it? A little bit for um, Well, Steve Austin did share his <laughs> little clip of singing and a lot of people followed him. So I don't know that 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 they connected that with the music all that much, but it helped him gain a following. Yes, for sure, and then after right? he was singing, they're like, "Oh yeah, you're on you're on that show." <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that when he told you that he was going to take part in the show. Had you even ever heard of the show? Oh no, we had never heard of the show, but we did watch a little of it, and I, you know, I just, just kind of talked to him about, you know, they can make you look any way they want to, you know, in how it is with reality. I would think as a mom, you would be worried about what they do, you know, with his reputation and that Mm -hmm. type of thing. But he did it and then he won and, and, you know, he wasn't going to do anything too crazy because he knew his grandmothers were going to be watching the show. <laughs> Those were the filters. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and he even said that. So <laughs> but it turned out to be fine. It was cute, you know, and yeah. everything. And he won some money and that was good. But I think it's interesting because there are people who have been on reality television shows, whether they were talent based or just, you know, something fun and adventurous that um, that's kind of part of their identity. But I feel like Even us saying this in the podcast, people are like, oh, oh, yeah, maybe he was on that show. Or they didn't know at all. (laughs) Like, it's so separate from Riley, the artist. It it, it hardly ever comes up, Yeah, because he's built his own career as, you know, Mm -hmm. a legitimate artist, which is so different than the way other people kind of have gotten there through reality TV. 
Yeah, he was more excited about the money that he won. And then after he was there for a while, he was like, well, might as well just stay and win this, you know, <laughs> gone this long. <laughs> yeah. Tell me kind of the next step. So he does the reality show. He definitely gains a social media presence. At what point did things turn more serious? When would you say that the legitimate Riley as a touring artist got going? Well, he just played shows. In, every week he played three or more shows. And he just built a following that way. And it was larger and larger venues, you know, selling out. And I guess when he was playing a show in um, Birmingham at Iron City, he sold the sold the venue out two nights in a row. And, and it was like, hey, you know, we might, this might be going somewhere. At that point, did he even have like management, full band, like no. all of the things? When he had a, he had a sort of a band, but it wasn't always the same ones, you know, back then. But so it was really him. He had a grassroots band. effort of mm-hmm. growing this, booking mm-hmm. his own shows, and it grew so much that he was selling out venues. Yes, wow. yeah, and larger and larger. And, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty. Fun. Was and that it, fun to watch and to oh, be yeah, there? Oh yeah, it and, was great. And then so by the time he did come up here, uh, you know, he had such a following that he was attractive. I think to, to the, the labels. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and they, they had done their research and they knew <laughs> what, and he knew who he was as an artist. He knows his fan base and he knows what they like. And you know, so there were a lot of advantages, I think. Yeah. Even today, I think one of the things that's interesting that you told me is Riley doesn't say no to shows. Like Not he really. keeps that calendar mm-hmm. booked. Mm-hmm. During like the Luke Holmes tour, you know, where you, there would be a Saturday night, a stadium show. He was doing at least a two or three sh- other shows of his every own week shows of him mm-hmm. headlining. Yes. He would just mm-hmm. fill in the holes on the calendar yes, and, and sell exactly. out his own venues. That's what they did. They tried to make them in the same location as much as they could. Yeah. And there's a lot of artists that will look at a calendar and be like, Oh my goodness, finally a day off. But mm-hmm. he just keeps going. No. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. It's hardly ever a day off. Yeah. But also, I guess the contrast of that, though, is his personality is actually someone who needs to recharge, and which I think is a common trait with so many artists. Connor's wired the exact same way. Mm-hmm. He can go so long, and he loves the stage and loves performing, but he has to recharge. Like, he had three days off this week, which hasn't been happening a lot, and mm-hmm. he was so excited yes. just to be still. Mm-hmm. He just wants to come home. If it's hunting season, he wants to get in the woods. Just, uh, yeah, and that's what, and he has, he kind of has to do that. And then he's ready to go again. Yeah, yeah. So alone time, mm-hmm. is that something he kind of I think relishes so. in? Yes, because, you know, he's always dealing with people, all, you know, all the time yeah. on Pulling the road. in so many different directions. Mm-hmm. If you're not using the Core 4 products for long-term skin health, you're likely very underwhelmed by the results of your skincare routine. Think of building your skincare routine like building a house. You need a solid foundation, otherwise your house will collapse. The same thing applies to your skin. If you're not using the Core 4, your skin lacks the resources to be healthy. So what are the Core 4 products? A vitamin C... SPF, an exfoliant, and a retinoid. These four products protect, repair, and strengthen the skin, and they are the first four products that are really worth investing in because they are the powerhouse of your routine. Barefaced makes it easy to get started with these four essentials with their Bare Necessities Bundle. This bundle can be customized to your skin type when you take the five-minute skin quiz on bareface.com. They even break down exactly how to use each product and how to introduce them into your routine. Super simple and and effective. Hey, got it from my mama listeners. Get a discount code. Use mama15 to get 15% off your first bare face purchase. Let's go back to the excitement of There Was This Girl was the first number one song. Is that the one as he was putting out music that you would have produced? Like, did you know, like, I think this is going to be the one for you? Um, I, I think that was a very, you know, it's a good radio song. Yeah, it's upbeat yeah. and that sort of thing, you know. Is it fair to say that sometimes the radio songs are not are the mama's favorite songs yeah probably so I yeah. agree <laughs> <laughs> I love them I mean you love any work of art yes, that your kid does absolutely, but, yes. but then we're secretly going you should really put this one out like I really think people would love this one they don't ask us though no. do they <laughs> yeah we don't get to we don't get to give our opinion no yeah no. and there's so many good ones that you feel like maybe weren't as appreciated right right yeah but we can still listen to them at home ourselves that's right but I, I do feel like he's got great people that working that he works with and yes. have his best interest in mind he just had that all the way through yeah and yeah. that's great well they've obviously figured out some sort of pattern for mm-hmm. success for him 
So Riley is known, obviously, on if you follow his social media and everything, his family is very important to him, which makes it kind of extra special to get to talk to you. He posts the cutest stuff. I, I was going through some of my favorites just recently, but your husband on the front row at a concert, mm-hmm. and he's just, you know, he just looks like a fan right there, which we are. We're fans, right, mm-hmm. as parents. But he's just right there, and I think that the caption was, get that man a beer, and his dad's on the front row. Mm-hmm. And so tell me that story. Somebody actually went and got him one, brought it on stage? No, uh, Riley brings a beer out with him but you know bush is one of his sponsors yeah. and so he brings it out with him and he hands it to someone in the crowd so he handed it to his dad <laughs> of course i only had to stand there four hours to keep that spot uh, <laughs> on the front row yeah exactly i'll do it i'll do it next time too <laughs> where do you like to be at a show out front in, I, in the pit I'm, or the yes in okay. the pit mm-hmm. yeah I'm not backstage, side stage. It's always out front. Yeah. And you're probably like me. And part of that reason is I love to watch everybody else's reaction. Mm-hmm. And that's the most, those are the most excited. Yes. Yeah, you know, I like to are, be in the crowd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do too. That's right. We're going to a show together soon. So okay. that's where we're going to be, right? <laughs> that's right. We <laughs> we're are. going to be down in the pit on the front row. <laughs> Maybe he'll hand us a beer. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this adorable picture where he'll bring his nephew up. You said that's his little buddy. And he loves to put him in the spotlight, doesn't he? He does. That's Joe, my grandson. And he and Riley are just, they're tight. They really are. They've always been close. And uh, Joe, Lo- he'll go out there and do whatever Riley tells him. It's so cute, though. <laughs> yeah, they He's have a, a great relationship. great little guy. How many grandkids do you have We now? have five. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. And... The youngest is Joe, the yes. one that's mm-hmm. particularly close to. Although he's very good to his all of the nieces all and nephews. Yes. As a matter of fact, he just got the 15-year-old his first Jeep, right? That's right, Aww. yes. Well, first of all, Riley likes to buy cars. Sometimes when he's on the road, that's what he's doing. In his spare time, is looking, you know, he, he buys, he sells. He usually makes money, yeah. but he also just likes cars. I was going to say, when he's buying, is he also, though, turning them over? And, or, do, or does he have a ton down at the barn? <laughs> he's got <laughs> I mean, a few. The house in, in Jacksonville. You know, we talk about love languages and, and gifts mm-hmm. are really his. That's the way he has showered your family and been able to share some of the success that he's had. Tell me some of the fun stories there. I know he gave you at least one car. He, two, yes, he, uh, well, he traded one, traded that one in for a different one, yes, and he bought his sister a car, he bought his grandmother, um, she works in the yard all the time, so he got her a little electric uh, golf cart that ha- helps her a lot with her yard work, um, And but he's always been that way. I know with my daughters, you know, I mentioned that they were athletes as well, when they graduated from high school, each of them, he made them a shadow box with their sports, you know, a jersey and awards and everything in the shadow box. And this is when he was young. Yeah. He was, you know, already doing some woodwork and things. So So he puts a lot of thought into it. He does. Very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. That's so kind. Mm -hmm. So sweet. But I think my favorite gift he's ever given you are actually farm animals. (laughs) Tell us about that. He did buy me a goat for my birthday one time. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Is this a welcomed gift? Are you like, okay, wait a minute. (laughs) I'm not sure, but, but it was, it was a thoughtful gift. But the goat got away from him, and he had to chase it kind of around several blocks. To like when he was presenting it to you? To when he you? got home with it, before he gave it to me. And he was pretty worn out after running it down. But, yes, so you never did, know what's what going to happen. What happening with the goat? Well, he caught it, and we kept it for a long time, and we don't have it anymore. Okay. But, but we have, oh, we have goats, but we just don't have that goat. Okay, so you had goats. Okay, so yeah, this he's wasn't got goats on his farm. extremely random then. Okay, what was the goat's name? Oh, I don't think it ever had a name. I'm not sure. <laughs> it was a miniature goat. Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. I've always thought those were so they, cute. It was really cute. And how far away do you guys live from each other? Just a couple of miles. Mm-hmm. So do you still cook a lot? Do you all have, like, are you able to have good family time? Oh, yes, we do. Um, when, he, when he gets home, he cooks. What He cooks. He oh, likes to do that. I guess on the road, he didn't have much control over all those things. Yeah. So yeah. when he gets home, he likes to grill and all. What is his workout routine and his eating routine? I mean, I think Connor put it best. I've told you this before, but Connor's like, it's just not fair for one guy to look like <laughs> Riley Green looks. Like, he's so he, handsome. He has, even as a child, he was very conscious about eating healthy. Really? He's always been that way. And he still does. You know, he doesn't eat sweets. He doesn't eat bread. You know, he just, he's very, he doesn't drink soda. So, and he's always been that way. Yes. Yeah. He's was been that, that way. It, initially, do you think it had to do with like wanting to perform well as an athlete? 
I don't know. It's just he, that's just how he was. And yeah, he still is. So I, I guess that's part of it. And working out mm-hmm. is obviously yeah. something he spends a lot of time doing. He does. He's very dedicated to that. So I put on the got it from my mom at Instagram, and I've let people know that I was going to interview you. You've been one of my most requested. Um, interviews anyway of people like when are you having Riley Green's mom on so here it is people so I let people send questions and I got an overwhelming response of one question in particular that people want to know they want to know your reaction to Riley now as an underwear model (laughs) well you know um it, I really, I thought they, the video that they did was really cute, and it captured his personality very well. Some of the, the still shots were maybe a little creepy, I don't know, <laughs> but I thought they did a nice job with it, you know, and, and uh, if he's happy with it, I'm happy with it. So. Did you get a warning on those, or did you see the ads when everybody else did? No, I, did, I saw the one everybody else did, yes, but I knew he was going to do it, and, yeah, you know. It's all fun. You know, it's all in fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, and anytime you have a company that says we want you to represent right. our company. Yes. I mean, uh-huh. there's some pride in that, right? Yes. No matter for what, sure. what yes. it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. And I mentioned that to him, you know, you've, you've got a good reputation and mm-hmm. those, that sort you of thing. It. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I guess when you're, when we all think about, you know, what our little boys are going to be when they grow up, you would have never guessed <laughs> underwear model. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> He originally wanted to be the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. That was his first. Uh, and every every time when he was small, he had on a Dallas jersey. Troy Aikman, you know, that was his that was his thing. He was yeah. a big Dallas Cowboys fan. Well, and then he did get to be a quarterback in college. So mm-hmm. you know, not yes. everybody can say that. That's right. So yeah, who knows what would have happened if he hadn't picked up that guitar? That's mm-hmm. for sure. So we talked about the touring life and you and your husband, y'all go a lot, which we do. I love mm-hmm. because we do as well. Mm-hmm. And it's just so fun to, I mean, I've got FOMO so bad. I hate hearing about shows afterwards, like the fear of missing out on I know everything. It. So if we can go, we try to, you know, mm-hmm. so you guys are, are the same. We are. Yes. And we, we're retired. So we try to, to tie, um, any place that we want to visit and a tour, with his tour, if we can. Some places we we don't, but yeah. a lot we do. Like an ideal situation, <clears throat> just like for us, like if he plays on a Friday night, then we'll stay the long weekend and, and try see to what's see there. the area. Mm-hmm. That's and what we do. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of motivation to see different parts of the country, and then the bonus or the icing on the cake is actually getting to see the boys perform. Yes, right? we went out to Jackson Hole. He played at the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar, and so – you know, we got to see Yellowstone and everything while we were there. That's and so cool. Just tying the two together. Yeah. It was great. What's a show that he's played, big or small, that you just remember maybe having an immense amount of pride in seeing him take part? Well, I guess the ones he seems to enjoy the most, and that's uh, probably some of the smaller shows, like Green Hall and Texas oh, yeah. and the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar. Those were, I like the club shows a lot, and and I think that he and and his band enjoys playing those. But the stadium shows were amazing. I mean, it was just you know amazing to be playing in front of that many people. Who was he Ohio opening stadium. for when those first started? I know he's done his own stadium shows, but who mm-hmm. was he first opening for? Well, he opened he played open for Luke Bryan in some large venues but Luke Combs was the stadium the stadium tour the that one he that did this year this year's stadium yeah, tour and, he, okay. and one show with Morgan Wallen he did at Ohio Stadium did you get to go to that I did yeah I bet that was it fun. was really amazing Crazy audience that was like 70,000 people or something like that yeah. I don't know well, who was the first slot that he got like for example Connor got to open for Thomas Rhett this past summer and that was his first big invitation to go mm-hmm. out with a bigger artist to open for them and that was so thrilling for our family what do you remember about that stage with Riley well, at first it was Brad Paisley, oh. and that was large, like, amphitheaters. And then Dirk Bentley, um, that, those were, like, arenas and, and amphitheaters. And then Luke Bryan was bigger, bigger crowds, mm-hmm. and he, uh, Jason Aldean for a little while. And before COVID, cut that yeah. short. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Luke Combs, where that was the stadium shows. So let's talk about some of the accolades and what that was like for you to see him honored. I know it was during COVID, so it wasn't quite the same as it would have been if you'd gotten to sit there and see it. But he was named um, New Artist of the Year for both the ACMs and the CMAs, right? 
Uh, I can't remember, okay. but one at least. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, it was during COVID, so it wasn't exactly like it would have been mm-hmm. otherwise. But, but the honor was the it's same. It's still the same, yes. Yeah. Yes. And just to see him recognized, because you see the hard work, the behind mm-hmm. the scenes, what it's taken. You know, you saw him play frat parties and college bar, all the things, until, you know, now, just a few weeks ago, you were seeing him in mm-hmm. a stadium with mm-hmm. 70,000 people. Mm-hmm. So to see him honored or recognized for that must mean a lot. Oh, yes, great. So, so exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was always up to something, you mm-hmm. know. It was just entertainment, mostly for everyone. In the high school days, a little sneaking out of the house kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we live in a little college town, and there's, you know, a little more to get into with that. For sure. Se- with that setup. But I saw a video not too long ago, and I don't know if it was from this year or last year, but... Um, he, you never get any warning when he's about to bring you out on stage. So never. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be on your toes, right? Yes. Yeah. So I saw the cutest video that, video of you and your husband dancing on stage. Was that your anniversary he brought y'all out? It was. And the only reason we were backstage is because there had been a tremendous thunderstorm right before the storm, in, I mean, the show. In fact, it was delayed about an hour and a half before the show actually started. And it was wet and it was muddy. And so we didn't go out into the pit like we usually do right so we were at side stage and that was we got called out brought out to dance Um, what did he (laughs) say oh it was uh when she comes home tonight you know yeah so it was it was sweet and then you just he did it again just recently for your birthday right yes we were we were in philadelphia and he i never know what's going on he took me out on stage he always puts on a cowboy hat when he does uh should have been a cowboy. Yeah, yeah. And so he, they are, you know, pulling, dragging me out there, and he <laughs> says, "I, I need your hat." So he wears my hat during, during the song. But so cute. That, yeah. Yeah, he loves you, his family. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> keeps keeps you on your toes. Tell me about the new album. I know you're excited for oh, it. Yes, this is going to yes. be his sophomore album, which is crazy because I feel like he's been doing this for so long. And this is really just yeah, the second album. He's had a album. lot of EPs, though. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff in between. Mm-hmm. He keeps everybody, the fans fed, as we say, right, with, with new music coming out. But this will be the next full-length album. Right, and I, I've heard some of it, not very much. I usually hear the songs when everybody else does when I go to pay my dollar 29 and buy them on <laughs> iTunes <laughs> just like everyone else yeah. but I did hear a few of them and then he's gonna put out a couple more of them before the album and they're all so good I yeah. love all of it what's your favorite um duet that he's done like a collab with someone I, think. I like the one he did with Thomas Red. it's a cute song yeah um I'll, they're all good. And then he's got the new version, a different round here. Oh, out, yes, right? with Luke Holmes. With Luke, yeah, that's, yeah, I really like that because so that's did, a great song anyway. What's the next thing coming up for Riley that you're excited about? Well, he's going to have his own tour starting in February. That's so I think exciting. it's like February till June or yeah. something like that. So I am i can't, I don't have the locations yet. You're I'm waiting on the trying calendar. Trying to figure out how I, I was, how I can get a hold of those so I can start <laughs> planning my life for next year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, all the, all the traveling. You're, where, what parts of the country are you going to get to see That's this right. year, right? What would you say that Riley got from his mama? You knew I was going to ask you that oh, one. Dear. <laughs> it's so funny. It's always the guest's most dreaded question, but I love it the best. So, Oh, maybe some of that stubbornness and uh, that oppositional attitude that he can have sometimes, which also makes him determined. Yeah. And maybe being funny. Yeah. He's oh, funny. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. So some of the humor and then um, the stubbornness, which... You know, it's probably one of those things like me. Sometimes when you're parenting, you're just like, well, I can't really say much about this because I'm seeing myself in you. Exactly. (laughs) But it also means you can kind of toe to toe if you have to. to, Yeah. You know, give them back their own medicine a Mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So our next plan is we're going to go to a show together. Mm -hmm. Connor and Riley do play together soon coming up, which I'm Mm -hmm. so excited about. And then, uh, but we're going to find a show that we can. Go, and we're, we're going to be in that pit together. Yes. So I'm fans of Riley Green, look for us in the pit. <laughs> it's great we'll, to talk to you. We'll be there. Thank you, Jennifer. I enjoyed it.